So what are the languages of the internet? Now, in many ways, that, that's going to reflect what are the languages of the world. Um, so, of course, there's a lot of overlap there. But the internet has a distribution that uh, is quite different than the overall global distribution. So let's take a look at uh, some numbers here. Um, so here we see uh, that, uh, well, I mean, one thing about the internet is that the level of English is much more dominant than it is in the world overall. Of course, English is the closest thing to a world language. It's the most widely learned language in the world, most widely distributed language in the world. But the level of dominance on the internet uh, is much higher. Uh, and so really, you're looking here at like, well, 50%, just about 50%. It was only very recently that uh, non-English uh, websites took over more than, you know, took over the majority. Uh, English is no longer being the majority of all websites, but it is by far the number one uh, language on the internet. So like this level, this level of prominence is far beyond uh, if just looking at, you know, speakers or writers around the world. Uh, and of course the internet, uh, the origins of the internet are in the United States. And you can see that even in like certain uh, top level domains like .edu, that's supposed to mean education, but it only applies to American universities, right? And like .gov, that's supposed to be government, but it's American government. So it really was designed uh, with the United States in mind and then it spread out from there. Um, and as a lot of things culturally uh, have, you know, of the 20th century and so on. So uh, it started uh, as being really almost entirely English and you could see like 75% um, in 1998. Uh, so, uh, you know, even then, like the, the non-English pages were starting, but it was still really overwhelmingly English. Uh, and you can see some different numbers like this other study said 45% in 2005. Well, this one, you know, is saying 49%. So like this is, these are different estimates, uh, of course. But certainly it, it does seem to be very clear that the number of non-English uh, sites is increasing much faster than the number of English and that the relative prominence of English is declining. Of course, that's only to be expected. Uh, something that started in the United States be overwhelmingly English. And then as it's now spread distributed throughout the world, although certainly not evenly throughout the world, but as it's now spread around the world, there is more of a smoothing of that curve as, as other languages start to show up. So, and oh, and, th and this by the way is among the top 10 million websites. So not counting uh, every single website, but certainly a large number. So now, well, let's take a look at some of the top ones. Well, okay, these rank numbers are off because I think they're based on the 2023. But I want to rank based on the 2024, because why not? Why not take the latest numbers? So we have this, yeah, you can see from this like overwhelming first place, you know, I've got kind of a kind of a smoother collection of these numbers here. So Spanish, German, Japanese, French, Russian, Portuguese, Italian, Dutch. So there is a there's a tendency Well, you can see like when you compare this list compared to the list of the top languages in the world overall that uh, you have there is a higher prominence for European languages um, but also Japanese. Japanese stands out here in fourth place uh, where it's a bit lower down in the world and you're missing Chinese. Chinese uh, you know being close to English up at the top in terms of uh, overall number of speakers uh, is really quite far down on the internet. Uh, and uh, the languages of India, so like Hindi, is not even on this page. Um, so that's surprising that uh, it's really not represented. But of course, this is the internet. Uh, so there's a very strong bias towards uh, places that are more highly so called developed, often like richer, richer countries richer parts of the world, and that, that can explain things like Japan uh, being up near the top, whereas India is much further down. 
Well, you can see here even relatively poor countries like uh, Indonesia uh, also rank up here. Uh, and you get down to, yeah, like all of these are major languages. Um, no, Hebrew is really quite high considering uh, the number of speakers. Uh, and you have a lot of these uh, famous languages. Bokmal is a version of Norwegian, so that's kind of uh, divided out between them. And uh, even Estonian, well, a language that uh, has only, I think there's only around 1 million speakers in this small country, uh, but it's in the top 40 of internet languages. Uh, and yeah, you're seeing a lot, there's a lot of very populous languages, uh, languages with many speakers um, that are in poorer parts of the world uh, that are not appearing on this list at all. So you can see if you, you know, drew a world map based on uh, the, the internet, or based on websites, you know, you'd have this like giant United States and this giant Europe and then, you know, Japan and like a few others and uh, a lot, you know, this like tiny little Africa, you know, like because of the distribution of uh, these, these websites and distribution of internet users is so uh, slanted towards the richer parts of the world. Okay. Yes, all other languages are less than 0.1%. Okay. And there's really, yeah, so there's, there's many languages that, really, that don't even have, you know, any websites at all, really. Okay. So, okay, now we can look at the, the scripts. Because that's, of course, an issue when it comes to uh, this written content, internet being primarily written. And here we have the Latin script. So that's the, the script descended from the ancient Roman uh, alphabet, the Latin that used to, to write Latin. And that's the by far the dominant script in the world that uh, includes most European languages and uh, many other non-European languages as well. Uh, so, of course, Latin, uh, as we're looking at right now, uh, is uh, really overwhelmingly uh, the main script. But now, uh, that's a, one thing that has really advanced in the, the last several years has been greater support for non-Latin scripts. Remember back in the, the 90s and whatever, like, it, it was really quite challenging to work with anything that was not Latin and often, like, other languages would be written with Latin scripts just uh, to make them more convenient to uh, work with on computer. And that still happens to some extent. There are issues, but Unicode, uh, which is a the wonderful standard of Unicode that is a single encoding system that can handle all the major writing systems in the world. Uh, that ha like, and, and that's a standard encoding now in uh, most situations uh, with computers. So you can really handle uh, almost any major script. So here we see the uh, Cyrillic being the Russian uh, and Ukrainian uh, writing system and uh, other languages around there. Kana Kanji being two writing systems of Japan. So this would be used for Japanese. You can see like that's really specifically for Japanese writing. Then we see Arabic uh, as the, the next script, Hanza, which would be Chinese characters, uh, Hangul, uh, Korean characters, Greek writing, that's probably mostly just for the Greek, uh, for actually writing the Greek language, Hebrew for the Hebrew language, and Thai for the Thai language. Okay, so now we can take a look at YouTube. Now here we see that there's a lot, uh, there's, well, this is based on Oh no, this is based on YouTube. Okay, this is internet users. Okay, here we have content languages, 66%. This is only based on the top channels though. Yeah, so we have 66% English, 15% Spanish. And here, Hindi showing up here, not so much in the writing, but uh, in, in, in the main website section, but it's showing up more here. Um, surprisingly, you know, Japanese is not as prominent on YouTube. We have 2% Korean, but Japanese not showing up. So a few differences there. English, uh, English still though, you can see even greater dominance than it is when it comes to websites. Uh, is, although this is only for the top uh, channels, so I, I don't consider this to be as representative. Now this table is we have estimated number of internet users. So not, so much, not specifically about those who create content, create websites, but just users in general. Here we can see that the 
prominence of English is still is not uh, nearly as much. And here we can see Chinese has a much greater prominence. In fact, is not too far behind. Although it is surprising that I'm still not seeing India here. Uh, I'm not seeing Hindi or any other Indian languages uh, among this top 10. Um, and this whole top 10 here adds up to um, just over three quarters of all. So there's still pretty large distribution, 23% of all other languages. Otherwise, this is closely representing the, the, top, the top language of websites where you have the top language of users. These are all, I mean, these are some of the big languages. This is, these are the big guns. This is the, these are the big ones. These are the top languages, many of the top languages of the world right here. Yeah. And then you can look at uh, specifically for Wikipedia. You can see yeah, similar types of names showing up. You see English here, though, once again, uh, is very much prominent, very much like you know, almost 10 times as much as Japanese. Japanese comes in second in Wikipedia and close with Russia. And actually, all of these uh, two through five are very, very close. And then uh, descending down. So, but again, you see this same list. So, there you see some similar names uh, of some of the most prominent languages in the world. And um, this is this is the internet, and it's essentially a list of the most prominent languages in the world, but with a very significant slant towards those that are more highly technologically plugged in. Uh, which basically corresponds to those that are the richest. So there's like there's an interesting picture of the world you get here. Um, it's the top languages in the world, but it's within this kind of you could say this kind of like upper crust in the world in a way. Maybe that's a bit exaggerated because you don't have to be upper crust in the world to you know use the internet. But there is kind of the, there's a kind of like a technological, a technosphere, or like a technological, uh, you know, um, side of the world that, uh, that that is plugged in. The most plugged in parts of the world. That's what you're seeing here. So what started as something entirely English is now half English. And here are some of the other big players. And these we can expect to be some of the uh, most uh, significant and influential languages of the 21st century.